we do not know nor do we understand so much as a little of our spirit. If you wish to say something about this, it would be better to keep silent. Many know the surface of this ocean, but they understand nothing of the depths. This world, this house of sorrows, is in darkness. But true knowledge is a jewel. It will burn like a lamp and guide you in this gloomy place. He who reads this story without profit is blind. Do not listen with indifference for this is none other than your own story. We have a true king. He lives behind the mountains called Kaf. His name is Zimmerg, and he is the king of the birds. He is close to us, but we are far from him. The place where he dwells is inaccessible, and no tongue is able to utter his name. The different types of birds that are seen in the world are thus only the shadow of the Zimmerg. Ponder over this mystery, but do not reveal it. He who acquires this knowledge sinks into the immensity of the Zimmerg, though he must not think that he is God on that account. If you become this of which I speak, you will not be God but you will be immersed in God. All appearances are nothing but the mysterious shadow of the Zimmerg. The Zimmerg is not distinct from his shadow. To hold the contrary is to err. The one and the other exist together. Seek reunion, or better, leave the shadow and you will discover the secret. By his abounding grace, he has given us a mirror to reflect himself, and this mirror is the heart. Look into your heart, and there you will see his image. One must have the heart of a lion to follow this unusual road, for it is very long and the sea is deep. Go forward then, without fear, forsake childish things, and above all, take courage, for a hundred vicissitudes will come upon you unawares. Strive to bear sorrow, affliction, and wounds, and thereby show your zeal. If you are wounded, accept it, and do not give way to self-pity. The soul, like the body, is in a state of progress or decline, and the spiritual way reveals itself only in the degrees to which the traveler has overcome his faults and weaknesses, his sleep and inertia, and each will approach nearer to his aim according to his effort. Acknowledge your own faults, then, guilty though you be, God will have mercy on you. O oh, you who hear me, Remain silent, and work actively. Give up your useless aims, and pursue the essential things. Be occupied as little as possible with the things of the outer world, but much with the things of the inner world. Then, right action will overcome inaction. But those who find no remedy in acting had better do nothing, since you must know when to act, 
and when to refrain from action. You too, put your foot forward. If you do not wish to, then follow your fantasies. But if you prefer the secrets of the love of your soul, you will sacrifice everything. You will lose what you considered to be valuable, but you will soon hear the sacramental word, enter. When the mystery of the essence of beings reveals itself clearly to him, the furnace of this world becomes a garden of flowers. He who is striving will be able to see the almond in its hard shell. He will no longer be preoccupied with himself, but will look up at the face of his friend. In each atom he will see the whole. He will ponder over thousands of bright secrets. Strive then to understand the mystery before life is taken from you. If while living you fail to find yourself, to know yourself, how will you be able to understand the secret of your existence when you die? You participate in the life of man, yet you are only a pseudo-man. Seek the trunk of the tree, and do not worry whether the branches do or do not exist. The being I speak of does not exist separately. Everyone is this being. Existence and non-existence is this being. When the spiritual traveler enters this valley, he will disappear and be lost to sight, because the unique being will manifest himself. He will be silent, because this being will speak. The part will become the whole, or rather, there will be neither part nor whole. The day will come when the sun will draw aside the veil which covers it. So long as you are separate, good and evil will arise in you. But when you lose yourself in the sun of divine essence, they will be transcended by love. If I am reduced to ashes, there will not be found in me another being than you. I know you, but I know not religion or unbelief. I am you. You are I. I desire you. My soul is in you. You alone are necessary to me. You are for me this world and the world to come. There is neither Kebe nor Pagoda. Learn from my mouth the true doctrine, the eternal existence of being. We must not see anyone other than Him. We are in Him, by Him, and with Him. Man lives in a state of imagination, in a dream. No one sees things as they are. Keep yourself within yourself and do not let the exterior life capture you. So long as we do not die to ourselves, and so long as we are identified with someone or something, we shall never be free. The spiritual way is not for those wrapped in exterior life. Until you die to all the things of this world, one by one, you will not be free. And seeing that you will not be long in the prison of the world, detach yourself from everything.
So long as you are identified with the things of the world, you will not set out on the path. But when the world no longer binds you, you enter as in a dream. But knowing the end, you see the benefit. The most high is a vast ocean. The paradise of earthly bliss is only a little drop. All that is not this ocean is distraction. If you wish to follow the way of love, throw your prejudices to the wind and renounce attachment to the things of the body. Meanwhile, in order not to be a source of evil, do not give way to resentment and self-love. He who loves me, but loves his head better, is no true lover. So long as the dog of desire runs before you, the devil will not leave you, but will use the dog's allurements to mislead you. Then each of your vain desires becomes a demon, and each one yielded to begets a hundred others. Love should tear aside your prudence. Love changes your attitude. To love is to give up your ordinary life and forsake your tawdy pleasures. If you have fallen into the ocean of exterior life, then never cease to think about how to reach the shore. Seeing that the world passes, you yourself should pass it by, abandon it. For whoever becomes identified with transient things can have no part in the things that are everlasting. You must put in chains the demon, the tempter, and having done this, you will enter the palace of Solomon. Everyone sees your vanity and self-pride, your resentment, envy, and anger, but you yourself do not see them. There is a corner of your being full of dragons, and by negligence you are delivered up to them, and you pet and cherish them night and day. So if you are aware of your inner state, why do you remain so listless? So long as you continue to live, O oh my dear, in the pride of life, your readings of books and your puny efforts are not worth an obol. Only when you give up this pride and vanity will you be able to leave this exterior life without regret. So long as you hold on to self-conceit and self-pride and the things of the outer life, a hundred arrows of vexation will pierce you from every side. My writings have an astonishing peculiarity. They give more profit according to the manner in which they are read. If you ponder over them often, they will benefit you more each time. What is the use of my words? though they come from the depth of my soul, if you do not ponder over them. Listen to the words of justice and faith. Listen to the teaching in the Diwan of the sacred books. If you have faith, then undertake the journey to which I invite you.